So today I'm pleased to be joined by Jonathan Martin, CMO at Hitashi Vantara. And uh, Jonathan, we are a depressing number of months into a very changed world right now. Obviously, I want to find out how work is different, but let's just start with uh, what about life? Yeah, so uh, great, great to be here. Great to have the opportunity to talk to you. Yeah, kind of life is is very different, huh? I think I was was always that person that used to love getting up in the morning, going, getting ready to go to the office, and I love that you know time on the way to the office and time on the way home. And um, but you know, three or four months into this, I can honestly say, like, I think this working from home thing is kind of more efficient and kind of more effective and I can cover a lot more geographies in a lot shorter amount of time so it is different it's definitely a different way of working but I think I've probably talked to more customers and more partners in the last two to three months than I have done probably in any point in the last 10 years of my career so people are more open to taking a call I think than they've pre previously ever been um, and I can literally do you know half an hour with the customer in India and half an hour with a customer in California and half an hour with a customer in, in, in the US in a day. Uh, and it's like, it's very, very easy to go and do. So I think there's definitely some significant advantages about doing things this way. You've always, I mean, we've probably met more often than not at events. That's something that's taken a big hit back now. And I'm not saying that events are the be all and end all of marketing, but they're certainly a very, um, you know, big manifestation of messages and so on. Um, do you see that coming back? Um, or does this ability to, as you say, people will take calls? There's, there's, there can be a personal element to doing Zoom. You know, you see people's rooms, environments. We're not all dressing exactly as we were before. Some of us, two of us here have grown beards. Um, are you able to keep those relationships up? Do you think events come back in the same way? Yeah, so, so, so I think, you know, for, for, for us, we were tracking... 250 events globally, which uh, in a matter of three and a half weeks went down to a single event. So when 75% of your leads come from events, that is a massive, massive shift. So really the last few months has been like, how do you make the pivot to digital in, in demand gen? And you know, we've all done the same thing, right? All, all B2B organizations have taken up like that, taken that event spend money, piled it into webinars, paid, piled it into paid search, piled it into influencers. Like that's where all the money's gone. Um, so I think if you're on the receiving end of that, if you're a customer or you're a prospect, you are deluged at this point with, with more content than you've ever been able to consume. So I think a new race is beginning to appear. And I think that that race is, is really going to be around content. Like content, we've all said, like content's king, content's king for I don't know, ever since I've done marketing. But but I, I did a, a bunch of primary research a few few weeks ago on just type, the types of content that B2B companies are kicking out. And frankly, like it's all straight out 2004. It's really pretty dry. It's, you know, your monotone product manager droning on about why their, their solution is better than someone else's solution in 4.5. It's really not that engaging. We've got to step our game up significantly. And I think companies need to begin to think of themselves more as media houses building content which is both educational and entertainment in order to keep people engaged. Do you think if, if you can drive good content, and clearly that's something that uh, I know is very close to you, you know, your desires, but if you can drive good content, doing it with these new tools, is that something you'd like to see continue? Or do we all need to consider booking rooms in Vegas in a couple of years? Honestly, I, I think it's going to be 18 months at least before people are going to be comfortable doing what we all used to do, which is, you know, get on a plane, fly halfway around the world and go hang out with 20,000 other people at, at an event. I just don't think those days are coming back anytime in the, in the immediate or, me, or medium term future. Um, so this is the only channel that we've got during that time. And I think that there's gonna, it's gonna require organizations to really figure out how do they get great at placing the right content in the right channel, targeting the right audience, and the most in hardest and most important bit is at the right time. That is a data science exercise. Well, it is, um, and I want to, I think you're right, it's data science. There's also uh, a um, qualitative element to this because as you say, it has to be good content. I mean, it has to be focused in the right ways at the right time. 
but it's not just a matter of taking the content we had and dumping it into this new arena. It's, it's making it good and engaging as well. People's expectations of how they buy are set by their consumer experiences. And B2B has a long, long way to go to deliver content which is as engaging, and by engaging I really mean like by being as educational and entertaining as you do in the B2C realm. And, and that is the only way, for, if we've got to do this for 18 months, that's the only way we're going to keep people engaged. Um, we're going to have to close here, but this is fascinating. I'd love to feel that the cameras would now pan back, our virtual backgrounds would disappear, the big band was there and we'd go into the dance number. But uh, anyway, we'll do that next time. Thank you very much. I'm sure. Yeah. All right. Thanks for your time.